the second video on the series for trigonometry for the P1 syllabus. Today we're going to be looking at trigonometric graphs, the basic graphs and basic transformations of these graphs. So sine, cos and tan are graphs that you probably will have seen in previous years. You need to know the basic shape of what they look like, where they go through the axes, etc. So you also need to know uh, for degrees and radians what the graphs look like. So I've drawn both of them here for degrees and radians. So 180 degrees is pi radians. And here's your tan graph. Those dotted lines you can see there at 90 and 270 are asymptotes. The graph gets close to them but never actually touches them. The unit circle is the way that I like to describe where we get these trigonometric functions from. The unit circle is a circle centered at 0, 0 and with a radius of 1. Now as we start here, this is 0 degrees and we're going to go around anti-clockwise. As we go around, imagine the angle where it hits the circle if you draw a line straight across to the y-axis. That value is the sine of the angle. So it's like the height of the angle as we go around. So as you can see, where we start, the height is zero. When we get around to 90 degrees, you can see the height increasing until we get to 90 degrees, around about there, and we've stopped, and you can see the height is one. As we continue, the height is getting smaller and smaller until we get around to 180 degrees, and the height is zero. Now the height is negative, so if I stop it right there, you can see the sine value, the value on the y-axis is around about negative 0.7 at that point there. And it's going to keep getting less and less as we go around. At 270 degrees, the height is negative 1, and then we continue on around again until we get to 360 degrees, where the height is 0. That's where we get the graph of sine of x from. Now we could do it in radians or we could do it in degrees. Here's the equivalent graph for, for cosine x. This time, the it's not the height that we're looking at, but the kind of length of the angle. So as we angle moves around, go to wherever the angle hits the circle, go straight down to the x-axis that value is the cosine of the angle. So right now you can see cosine of zero is one, that's the length of that red line. And as we go along, look at the length of the red line, where we hit the circle, go down to the x-axis, as we get to 90 degrees, we get zero. So cos of 90 is zero. Keep going, you can see the cosine value is now a negative, and coming around to minus one. So cos of 180 is minus one right there, Cosine values are still negative, so if I pause it somewhere down here, you can see for this angle, blue angle here, hit the circle, go up to the x-axis, there's the cos value right there, about negative 0.54. Cos of 270, 0. And we come back around again till we get to 360 or 2 pi, and the cos value is 1. Here's the tan graph. Now the tan graph is a little bit more interesting. If you draw a line here that's a tangent to the circle, just touches it right here. Now where we draw our angle, starting once again from zero, going around anti-clockwise, just continue that angle along through the circle till it hits this line. That height is the tan of the angle. Now whereas sine and cos went between minus one and one, you can see tan's gonna get bigger. Once we get an angle like 70 degrees, it's gonna be up here. Let's draw it, get around to about 70 degrees and I'll stop it. So you can see that red line there is the value of tan. Okay, so this is tan of 63 degrees. That's that height there, which happens to be 1.96. Let's keep going. You can see as we get close to 90 degrees, tan value is really big. In fact, 53. This line here is going to meet this line here at way up at 53. Now hopefully you can appreciate it, 90 degrees, this line and this line are parallel, they don't meet. So tan of 90 is not defined. It does make sense if you define tan like this. Okay, so tan of 90, we have an asymptote. 
Now what happens after that? For the next angle, if you just keep that angle going straight through the circle and where it hits down here is the tan value. So here we go, coming around to 180 degrees. Tan of 180 is going to be zero. And as we continue again, we're back to basically where we started from. 270 degrees, we've got the same problem where tan is undefined. Come back now to 360 degrees. So the tan function is a little bit different. Notice that the period of the tan function is 180 degrees, not 360 like the other graphs. I just want to look at the transformations of these trig functions now. You need to know what A, B, C and D will do when you change them for the basic sine cos graphs. So let's first look at the value of A. A controls the amplitude of the graph, that is the height of the graph. So if I make A close to 3, you can see now the graph's going between 3 and minus 3. Okay, so I'm just changing the value of A of the function. If I make it negative, instead of going up first, the graph goes down. So that's just changing the value of A, the number in front of the whole thing. So there's just sine of X now. If we change the value of B, this number here, changing the value of B affects the period of the function. So when B is equal to 1, the sine graph does 1 revolution if you like, repeats itself once every 360 degrees. If I make B equal to 2, it now repeats itself twice in 360 degrees. If I make B 3, it repeats itself 3 times, 4, etc, etc. So there's sine of 3x, repeating 3 times in 360 degrees. The value of C just moves the graph left and right. You see those numbers changing there, that's just degrees. So x minus 122.8 degrees just means that we start at 122.8. The last one is D. The value of D on the end just shifts the graph vertically up and down. So if I make D equal to 2, you can see we've got sine of x plus 2. So the whole graph has just been shifted up 2 units. Let's have a look at this graph here. This is a cos graph. It looks like a cos graph because it's starting up here at the top. And then going down has that kind of characteristic shape there. One of the questions in the exam you, you may get is to write down the equation of that graph. Alright, so uh, let's go through each one of these values here and see if we can work it out. Firstly, the amplitude. The graph's going between 1 and minus 3. Now normally a cos graph will be going between 1 and minus 1. So the amplitude is just 1. Clearly the amplitude of this one is 2. Minus 1 is kind of the middle of the graph. It's going up 2 from there and down 2 from there. So I know that the value of A is going to be 2. Let's look at the period now. This cos graph is repeating 3 times in 360. So therefore I know that the value of B is 3. Now, if we just had 2 cos 3x, then it would be going between 2 and minus 2. But this one's going between 1 and minus 3, so clearly it's been shifted down 1. So the value of d is minus 1. That's the kind of thing you have to go through in your mind if you're looking at one of these graphs and having to work out the equation. So this summarises what happens when we change the values of a, b and c in the tells you how many times the graph repeats in 360 or 2 pi and you can work out the period using these formulas here. So for example if b is equal to 2 it repeats twice in 360 and the period is now 360 divided by 2, 180. C just moves the graph up and down. So here's the graphs of 3 sine 2x and 2 cos a half x. 3 sine 2x has an amplitude of 3 and it repeats twice in 2 pi. 2 cos a half x has an amplitude of 2, so it goes between 2 and minus 2, and it repeats half as many times in, in 2 pi. So in other words, it only gets through half the amount it normally would in 2 pi. So the period of this function here would be 4 pi. So what's the equation of this graph? A sine bx. Okay, so the, um, the amplitude is 2. 
going between 2 and minus 2, so I know A is 2. It's repeating once, twice, three times in 360, so B must be 3. So this is the graph of 2 sine 3x. Okay, this one here is a little bit trickier. A minus B cos Cx. We're trying to find A, B, and C. First thing I notice about this cos graph is it's been flipped around, upside down. So that's why we've got this negative in front of the cos x here. So you could think of this graph as negative b cos cx plus a. That might help. Okay, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about b first, the amplitude. This graph's going from minus 2 to 6. Now the normal cos graph is just going between minus 1 and 1 when the amplitude's 1. This one's going from minus 2 to 6, so it's going 8 is the difference here. So it must be going up 4 and down 4. In this middle value of 2 here. So I know that B is equal to 4. Okay, The amplitude is 4 from 2 up to 6 and from 2 down to minus 2. So I know B is 4. I also know that it's been shifted up 2, so I know that the A has got to be 2. Okay, Shifted up 2 from where it normally would be. So I've got A and B, I just need C now. How many times does it repeat in 2 pi? Once twice in 2 pi. So I know the value of c is equal to 2. This last example is an example of a uh, trig graph in context. We've got the height of the c above sea level at a certain jetty given by this equation. And you can use trig equations to model these things very accurately. Uh, here t is time in hours from midnight. So let's look have, have a look at the graph here. The amplitude is 2. So it'll be going between 2 and minus 2. We add on 3, so now it's not going between 2 and minus 2. It's going between 5 and 1. Okay, I hope that made sense. So the amplitude of 2, and then we add 3 onto all the values. So we've got a sine graph that now is going between 5 and 1. Now, the period, which is part, basically part B, remember the formula I showed you, it's 2 pi divided by the number in front of the t. So 2 pi divided by pi over 2, the pi's are going to cancel and it's going to give you 4. So the period of this function is 4, 4 hours exactly. So it's going to re repeat twice in the first 8 hours. So here's the graph. Going between 1 and 5, a basic sine graph, repeating twice in 8 hours. So the first high tide occurs 1 hour after 12am, so at 1am.